Hey guys, this is Franklin from My Law Academy. Listen, let me give you the big picture of negligence. Let's talk negligence, but let's talk specifically about duty. Negligence can be divided into five parts. Duty, breach, causation, damages, and defenses. Whether on an exam or in class, the first step to understanding or analyzing negligence is to start with duty. So what is the duty element? Basically, the defendant owes the plaintiff a duty or responsibility to avoid putting the plaintiff in unreasonable or foreseeable risk of harm or danger. Essentially, it's a duty to be careful. At this stage in the negligence analysis, your job is to ask yourself, okay, if the plaintiff was hurt, should the defendant have foreseen the risk or chances of the injury occurring? And if so, what reasonable thing could the defendant have done to have prevented the harm? So let's say you're planning to pull an all-nighter on a legal writing memo due the next morning. To help battle the fatigue, you hit Trader Joe's for low-calorie energy drinks. On a pit stop down the frozen food aisle, you slip on ice cream that had melted in the center of the aisle 30 minutes ago. Holding your leg in agony, a customer who happens to be a retired nurse rushes to the scene and in an attempt to temporarily stabilize your leg, re-injures an earlier CrossFit accident from a few years back. Due to a rare nerve condition, your leg is now paralyzed. Looking at these facts, you have a potential negligence claim against Trader Joe's, as well as the retired nurse. Let's look at the negligence claim against the retired nurse first. Your first stop in the negligence analysis has to be duty. Under duty, first, we'll look at the relationship between the plaintiff and the defendant. This will help us determine what standard of care or level of carefulness the defendant reasonably owed the plaintiff. One argument is that the standard of care should only be at a general standard since the nurse was just a stranger coming to another's aid like a good Samaritan. And she was retired and no longer practicing. On the other hand, there is an argument that the standard of care should be heightened because she is a nurse and should be subject to the standards of her professional training and skills. A strong analysis will make both arguments. Still under duty, we now analyze whether the defendant, the nurse, created an unreasonable risk of harm to the plaintiff. This would depend on whether her treatment of your leg was reasonable under the professional standards of a nurse with similar training and a similar background. If so, then the harm she created was reasonable. However, maybe you can argue that it was unreasonable for her to stabilize your leg without asking about any previous injuries or pre-existing conditions. Remember, the more arguments you make, the more exam points you'll earn. Lastly, we've got to analyze whether the harm to the plaintiff was foreseeable. The nurse may argue that she had no idea of the previous CrossFit injury or your rare nerve condition when she stabilized your leg. She holds that your injury and condition were outside Cordozo's foreseeable zone of danger. But you'll counter-argue that the defendant takes their plaintiff as they are and that all plaintiffs are foreseeable. That was Andrew's view in Paul's graph. For more about this argument, check out the video on Paul's graph. In sum, it appears that the nurse owed a duty to the plaintiff and maybe even a heightened standard of care. Let's take a peek at your negligence claim against Trader Joe's. Again, the first stop is duty. 
and we must look at the relationship between the parties. You are a consumer, and Trader Joe's is a business retailer. While Trader Joe's would like to be subject to the general lower standard of care of reasonableness, because Trader Joe's holds itself open to the public, it owes a heightened standard of care, or what is sometimes called a special duty. This is also true for relationships like a teacher to a student, a pilot to a passenger, or hotel to hotel guest. Depending on the relationship, heightened duties have different details and requirements. When it comes to businesses and consumers, the heightened standard of care that exists in that relationship is their duty to inspect their property and to make it safe. So the next question under duty is whether Trader Joe's created an unreasonable risk of harm to the plaintiff. One argument is that failing to regularly inspect their aisles unreasonably exposed the plaintiff to risk of injury. It's probably a good idea to apply the hand formula here as well. Using the hand formula, one argument is that the burden of inspecting the aisle more frequently was low. If you weigh it against the probability that someone could be seriously injured from dangers obstructing the aisle. Check out my hand formula video for more about cool ways to make complicated hand formula arguments. Lastly, we must analyze whether the harm to the plaintiff was foreseeable. Like the nurse, Trader Joe's may argue that your previous CrossFit injury and rare nerve condition were unknown variables in far too outside Cordozo's foreseeable zone of danger test. However, you'll counter argue that defendants take their plaintiffs as they are, and it's completely foreseeable that plaintiffs with any number of rare conditions could be injured in a store that is not regularly inspected for dangerous conditions. This argument was Judge Andrew's view in Paul's graph. In sum, it appears that Trader Joe's owed a duty to the plaintiff and would be held to the heightened standard of care. So, when you're analyzing duty, try to remember the big picture. First, always assess the relationship between the parties to help determine which standard of care should be applied, either general reasonableness or heightened. Next, check to see what arguments you can make about whether the defendant created or did not create an unreasonable risk of harm for the plaintiff. Sometimes, you'll apply the hand formula to help you out here. Finally, based on the facts, make arguments relating to whether the defendant should have foreseen that the plaintiff would have been harmed. Paul's graph is a great case to cite when making these arguments. If the defendant's conduct was unreasonable and the risk of harming the plaintiff was foreseeable, then depending on the level or standard of care owed, the defendant may owe a duty to the plaintiff. So that's the duty element of negligence. Be sure to get plenty of practice with this topic and you're more likely to do well on exams. <laughs>